Welcome back. Wow, yesterday's polymers experiment resulted in very nice studio decoration. All polymers changed into the colors of Chemcon TV. Today's headlines are feedback on the questions and answers of yesterday's seminars, the welcome reception, an interview on enforcement, and a sneak preview of the exhibition. We'll start with the questions and answers from yesterday's seminar on global approach to new chemicals. So in, in the, the regulations for new chemical notifications, there is, there is a requirement if you have ongoing tests and you get test results during your PMN review period, you need to provide those to EPA. Uh, and I, I think there's a, a 10 day window to do that from when you get the results. Unless you're at the end of your review period, in which case you need to let them know immediately. Uh, so there, there is an obligation to do that. Um, I think one of, one of the risks that you run if, you, if you're waiting for test results during your PMN review period is that you know, they're going to have to go back and revisit their risk assessment. Uh, are they going to need to put your PMN on hold to do that? I, I think the best examples you can go to are, where, are the countries where they have a, a set list of questions to answer. So we have one. Yeah, Canada has one, the U.S. has one, uh, and, and uh, you know, I think if you follow that, those series of questions and really address the issues that are brought up uh, in those standard sets, um, you know, that, those are the, the kinds of uh, substantiation arguments that you could rely upon. It's time to talk to our local reporter, TJ, about the welcome reception. Hi, TJ. Did you have a nice evening? Hello there. Yes, we had a great event. I like this hotel so much, I didn't even leave. You see, they're still cleaning up after last night's event. Please watch my coverage of yesterday evening. Today, the King Arthur Court brings you to a world of knights in shining armor. Knights line the ceiling of the entryway and guard entry to the court. Inside, a series of paintings depicting the life of King Arthur. A wonderful environment for catching up with old and new friends. Thank you, TJ. Splendid report. By the way, what a beautiful fountain behind you. Indeed, it is a magnificent fountain with nice Spanish tiles and an interesting inscription. All waters run into the sea. And do you see the nice stone replica of King Solomon's head? King Solomon from Solomon's Judgment. An excellent link to our next item on enforcement. One more thing, do you see the vacuum cleaner? Also invented here in Chicago. The first vacuum cleaner from the Windy City was called the Whirlwind. It was invented in 1868 by Mr. McGaffey. So is the remote control. Invented in Chicago in 1955. As I said, let's go to the topic on enforcement. We have an interview with Sylvia Dime and Volker Sobala. Today we'll discuss the topic enforcement. Uh, as you can see on the cartoon, it's there are many compliance driven companies which work along the inspectors very well. There are some countries uh, and uh, companies where they would like to conceal a little bit. So it's all about where are you established, what are you doing and do you want to comply or not. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll see and we'll uh, discuss today uh, with Sylvia Daim. Uh, and Volker Sobala. Sylvia, the REF3 Phase 1 report I read uh, talked about uh, different action points you like <coughs> industry to take. Could you yeah. talk about that a little bit? The uh, investigation showed that uh, a higher non-compliance level can be identified with small and medium-sized enterprises. If uh, an SME, a small and medium-sized enterprise, a company, is a member of uh, any of these uh, different chemical associations, they get support. Uh, we have a sort of a help desk, we have FAQs, 
um, uh, we have also uh, those training sessions, all these kind of things. Can we, as inspectors, urge small and medium-sized companies to uh, search for their associations, their industry representatives, uh, maybe join one of those associations, because that would be the best approach for them to yeah, get support? I think this is a very good point you are mentioning, uh, but the joining is the problem. At the European Chemical Agency, not so much the forum, but the agency itself, um, if they see a non-compliance uh, in the stage of dossier evaluation, they can inform the member state competent authorities that there is a non-compliance by the so-called SONC, the Statement of Non-Compliance. Is industry happy with this procedure, Volker? Well, definitely not. <laughs> I was <laughs> expecting that also. <answer. laughs> well, we think it's not appropriate um, to go with this, um, yeah, let's say, strong uh, uh, shot like uh, a song uh, right from the beginning. That, of course, ECHA sees it as the end of a procedure. Final question to both of you. Uh, what would you consider uh, as the key provisions for the coming years uh, as focus for enforcement activities? CLP is something definitely that we need to address. Authorization. Registration uh, remains an issue. Um, yes, I have to agree with, with most <laughs> of uh, what Silver was saying. Uh, authorization, um, we are struggling for an uh, authorization light, certainly because the requirements are very, very high. And uh, with regard to enforcement within the EU, we certainly have to go for a level playing field. Very nice concluding remark, I would mm -hmm. say. Thank you for your insights. This brings me to the statement of the day. Even if you're in compliance with all possible regulations, human beings still need to use the chemicals in practice. I will discuss this today with Leo van der Biesen of Royal Haskoning DHV, where Leo works as a safety and industrial hygienist. Leo, can you explain a little bit uh, why it's so difficult uh, to actually use the chemicals in practice in a safe way? Regenerate a wealth of information on the hazard and risk of substances. But through the current ESDSs, we are unable to convey that information to the workers that are using the substances because the information is too abstract and therefore they will not adapt their work practices and increased safety will not be met. Hmm. And your statement of the day is? Therefore my statement of the day is that workers need a clear and concise one-page instruction on how to use their substances safely. This is especially important for the professional workers of course and if you're unable to pr provide this information then reaches goal of increased protection of health and safety of workers will fail. As explained yesterday, you can vote for this uh, statement via the ChemConnect app. Leo, thank you very much for your statement. And also thank you very much for assembling the exhibition with our team. You're welcome. Let's take a look at the forecast of the day. Hello? Hi there! The cell phone, another Chicago innovation. Handy! I'm at the exhibition area, which looks awesome! Yeah, thanks. Uh, and what are you doing with the golf club? It used to be a mini golf course. Time to practice! <laughs> TJ, maybe it's better if you play a more safe and contemporary uh, game than mini golf. At the registration desk, you can get a ChemCon exhibition game sheet. Hello there! I'm here for the exhibition game! Thank you! Here you go! Please activate your ChemConnect app and Bluetooth and enjoy the game. Thank you, I'll get started right away. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye. Strange guy. Once again, it's time for the forecast of the day. Our main focus is Europe today, with REACH authorization, socio-economic impact assessments, supply chain communication and extended safety data sheets. Furthermore, we look into global topics like biocides, endocrine disruptors and nanomaterials. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.